Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10, Jomsborg. Jomsborg has been called the medieval New York City. If the myths are to be believed, Jomsborg was a mighty Viking stronghold that has never officially been found. Historians don't know if it was a real place or nothing but a fantasy. Legend has it Jomsborg was founded in the early 960s and lasted a mere 80 years. Its townsfolk were a special group of Vikings known as Joms Vikings. They were an almost mythical group of specially selected warriors with exceptional skills. The stronghold may have been on the eastern outlet of the Oder River near the modern town of Wolin. This would place the city in Polish territory, most likely on a natural hill just north of town. In the Middle Ages, Wolin or Volin was the site of an emporium. An emporium was a kind of next-level marketplace, like an exotic bazaar. People came from all around to sell their goods here at the highest prices. If you wanted to purchase some weird trinket from Egypt, you traveled to the emporium to find it. Merchandise could be found here from all over the globe. Historian Loritz Weibel says Jomsborg is nothing but a legend. Historian Adolf Hofmeister believes it's in Volin. There is a difference of opinion within the scientific community, but what's the importance of the place anyway? What makes the legendary town so special? In the Joms Viking saga, Jomsburg was built by the mighty Danish king Harald Bluetooth. It was a megalithic fortress the likes of which no Viking had built before him. Huge stone towers rose over the harbor with catapults on them. The catapults could be used to smash enemy ships into pieces if they got near the town. There was a great iron gate that sealed the entrance to the harbor, preventing invasion. The harbor itself had the capacity to hold a small fleet. Jomsborg remained the greatest stronghold of the Vikings until 1043. That was when the Dano-Norwegian king Magnus the Good showed up and burned the whole place down. The townspeople were slaughtered and Jomsborg was lost. All modern attempts to find this city have failed. These stories are tame enough it seems like it could have been a real place. Harald Bluetooth supposedly died at Jomsborg in 985. It's connected to countless historical events, but there is no trace of it anywhere. And now for number 9, but first, it's shoutout time! Big thank you to Chukwufu Naya for the generous super thanks! If I said that right, thank you so much! If you are new here, subscribe to join the Origins Explained family! Number 9. The City of Caesars the City of Caesars, aka the Wandering City, is a legendary place that supposedly existed once in Patagonia. Rumors of the city have been circulating for roughly 200 years, but despite multiple expeditions to find it, nobody has ever found proof of its existence. Most historians agree it's nothing but a legend, while others are certain its ruins are out there somewhere. According to the earliest legends in the days of Spanish conquistadors, the city of Caesars was home to immeasurable wealth. The city was filled with gold and precious stones, it had roofs hewn from silver. The towers were made of solid jasper with golden bells and the belfries. Some accounts say the city was home to a legendary race of pale giants. But where did the stories begin? It all started in 1515 with Spanish explorer Juan de Solis. He and his men were on an expedition near Buenos Aires in Argentina when they were attacked by a group of natives. A small handful of survivors fled into the wilderness. They tracked inland into the great land of giants known today as Patagonia. That was where they encountered the mythical city and the unusual white men who lived there. The initial accounts didn't say the men were giants, only white. There seemed to be a lost city of European-looking people at the end of the world. The first time the city was named was in 1528. Francisco César was leading an expedition across Argentina when the explorer stumbled upon this same city as Juan de Solís. This time, they claimed the city was cut inside of the Andes Mountains. Most of the accounts of these early Spanish explorers were exaggerated by chroniclers who heard the tale from someone else and wrote about it. Many expeditions did vanish while exploring South America, which led to even more outrageous tales. This was the New World, after all. Stories of lost cities, mysterious races of people, and entire tribes of giants were exactly what people back in Europe wanted to hear about. Number 8. The Gates of Anun In ancient Welsh myth, Anun is the name for the other world. The word itself translates to very deep place. 
But it's not hell or anything like hell. It's also not the realm of the afterlife like Hades in Greek myth. Anun is more of a fantasy world. The Welsh used to believe that on the other side of our world is a different plane of existence. This place was said to have great castles, mighty kings, and fearsome beasts. Anun was a world straight out of a fairy tale. The ruler of this mythical other world was Aaron. There are multiple mentions of Anun in medieval Welsh folklore. In the mythical tales of Mabinogi, Anun appears four times. It's also in Irish mythology, though it's portrayed a little differently on the other side of the water. The Irish believed Anun was an island somewhere far away in the sea that was impossible to get to. The Welsh believed it was hiding under the earth. The only way to get there was through a magical gateway. As Christianity became the dominant religion in the British Isles, Anun became less and less popular. It sounded too much to the Christians like their version of hell. In time, the stories of Anun weren't told anymore, only kept alive through ancient texts. There are still places in Wales where people used to believe one could gain access to the other world. Most of the magical gateways are totally ordinary places. For example, there is a secluded waterfall in the Swemsich Valley that is said to hide a secret portal to Anun. There are no ruins, just the waterfall. Another place is Glaslin, a lake in the Snowdonia National Park. This was the lake King Arthur threw his sword into and where his body was placed in a boat after his death. There is a great stone here said to have magical powers, and the lake is also one of the gateways to Anun. Number 7. Lassiter's Reef Lassiter's Reef is a legendary place in Australia that has never officially been found. The legend begins in the 1920s. A man named Harold Bell Lassiter caused a stir in Australia when he claimed to have discovered a massive deposit of gold in the outback. The gold vein Harold found was ridiculously huge, several miles long within the McDonnell Ranges. Harold claimed he was adventuring through the area in 1897 when he got lost and almost died in the desert. Before he passed out from exhaustion, Harold saw gold veins over 9 feet wide in some places and jutting 6 feet from the ground. But because of his rough state, Harold passed out and almost died. Another traveler came upon him by coincidence, rescued Harold, and took him out of the desert. In 1929, Harold convinced the Australian Workers' Union that he could find the lost reef of gold with a properly funded expedition. The expedition launched in 1930, but it was a disaster. As the expedition continued through the wasteland, the team began to seriously doubt Harold's claims. They thought he was a fraud. He wasn't able to recognize the landmarks or direct them the right way. There was a mutiny, and Harold was abandoned in the middle of nowhere. Only one guy stuck around to see if Harold knew what he was talking about. But after following Harold through the wilderness for so long, Paul Johns, Harold's last friend, abandoned him too. He would later tell people he thought Harold had gone insane. One year after the failed expedition, Harold's body was discovered in a cave. He had died from what most people die of in the desert, dehydration and malnutrition. Near his corpse was his diary. In it, Harold had written that he found the reef again after he was abandoned. The fact that Harold used his last ounces of energy to write that he had seen the gold deposit makes it seem like he was telling the truth, although everyone he knew thought he was crazy. You have to admit that if he was lying, it seems crazy for him to have gone out into the wasteland again just to die for a hoax. There are still people who believe the gold is out there and are still looking for it, although probably with better technology and more prepared. Do you think Harold really found a mysterious deposit of gold or was he a total lunatic? Let me know in the comments! Number 6. The Lost City of Zerzura Zerzura is the name of a legendary ancient city said to be hiding somewhere in the Sahara Desert. The first European reference to the city of Zerzura came from English Egyptologist John Gardner Wilkinson in 1843. He wrote that five or six days west from the road leading to Farafra in Egypt is an oasis called Zerzura. The paradise in the middle of the otherwise barren desert is supposedly home to ruins of an unknown date. The ruins are all that remain of a forgotten civilization nobody knows the name of. When John heard about the place, he was told it was discovered 20 years earlier by an Arab and his camel who got lost in the desert. 
John wasn't the only one who believed a city was waiting in the deepest reaches of the Sahara. The Book of Hidden Pearls, a medieval Arabic manuscript from the 15th century, also describes a hidden treasure in Egypt's desert. The book goes into detail about a lost ruin surrounded by palm trees and freshwater springs. The book calls this place Zerzura, but everything else the book says is extremely cryptic. The text says the door to Zerzura is closed. The door is carved in the likeness of a bird, and it can only be accessed by inserting a special key into the stone bird's beak, then entering the city to find wealth worthy of a king. Sounds like Indiana Jones, right? Scholars are torn when it comes to Zerzura. It's entirely possible that there is a lost city nobody has found yet in the Sahara. It could have been completely covered by sand and the oasis gone dry. In 1928, Dr. John Ball wrote about a lost oasis in the Libyan desert. In 1447, a manuscript written by Osman and Nabulsi, a Syrian emir, mentions an abandoned village by the name of Zerzura. A city or a town named Zerzura likely existed in the Sahara at some point over 500 years ago. Whether it was full of riches or just a small oasis village, nobody will know until the place is found. Number 5 the land of the Puka. The Puka was a shape-shifting creature from Celtic legend in ancient Ireland. The Puka were part of the fey race of magical beings. Endowed with supernatural abilities and connected to the natural world, Pukas were thought of as mischievous creatures like poorly behaved fairies. It's unclear if they started in Scotland or Ireland, but every region seems to have their own version. Cornish cultures called the creatures Puka, which was a kind of water spirit. In Welsh folklore, they spoke of the Puka as well. Even on the Channel Islands, they had their own words for the mischievous beings. Puke. The land of the Puka was Ireland itself. Rather than believing in a mirror universe or a magical realm on the other side of reality, ancient Celts believed Ireland used to be inhabited by magical beings. They believed leprechauns, banshees, fairies, the Puka, and their own gods lived in Ireland in a time before humans. The Puka and Ireland's other mythical creatures were thought to be descendants of the Tautha de Danann. These were the Celtic gods and goddesses who lived in Ireland before the rise of men. Nobody truly knows where all these stories come from. The word Puka may have come from the name Boga, which was a nature god many thousands of years ago. It's doubtful shapeshifters ever existed. Still, it's fascinating to know the Celtic tribes believed Ireland was once overrun by fairies and leprechauns. And now for number four. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Farkas Larissa for supporting this channel. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. Number four, the city of Kish. The first great civilization in our history was Sumer. The Sumerian people rose in ancient Mesopotamia on the floodplains of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers around 6,000 years ago. Researchers still don't know what inspired these first humans to begin developing technology. Nobody knows why they suddenly understood how to use irrigation systems and how to write in a written language. But they figured it out and they did, creating the first great metropolis called Eridu. As the centuries wore on, the civilization built other great cities like Ur and Uruk. Then there is the city of Kish, located in Iraq near all of the other cities built by the Sumerians. It's about 50 miles from Baghdad, which was built over the ruins of ancient Babylon. Kish was likely occupied as early as 4300 BC, give or take a few centuries. According to the ancient document known as the Sumerian King List, Kish was the first city with its own king following a devastating flood that swept the globe. This would be the same flood detailed in the Bible and in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Researchers are still struggling to figure out if the flood happened for real or if it was a myth told since the dawn of time. Kish is a very real archaeological site. It's been excavated since the early 1920s. Archaeologists have found the ruins of massive terraced pyramids called ziggurats. They have found proof of urban activity, economic areas, and the presence of a military. This was, based on physical evidence, one of the greatest cities Mesopotamia ever saw. Some are skeptical if it was even part of the Sumerian civilization. Ancient historian Ignaz Gleb once wrote that Kish was the capital of a totally separate civilization outside of Sumer. 
If the theory is true, history books will have to be rewritten. Sumer may not have been the first great society. There may have been others even older. Kish may have been its own civilization that rose alongside Sumer. Number 3. The Oxus Civilization In Turkmenistan's Karakum Desert are the ruins of one of history's most unknown lost civilizations. At the site of Gonur, in the middle of sand and scrub brush, is the center of a vast network of settlements stretching across the Central Asian plains for a thousand square miles. To any normal person, the whole region would seem empty. There are no high walls or battlements. There are no shining palaces in the distance. It's an empty wasteland. But it isn't. Western scholars may not know much about the civilization that once lived here, but Victor Saryanidi does. Victor is the brilliant archaeologist behind the discovery of the lost Oxus culture. During the reign of the Soviet Union, archaeologists started digging in the deserts on the fringe of Afghanistan. Near the Oxus River, they found evidence of a civilization almost as old as the Sumerians. The Oxus culture ruled much of what is now Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, a quarter of Iran, and northern Afghanistan. No evidence of this civilization had ever been found before. Then, after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1990, archaeologists withdrew from Central Asia. Only a handful of researchers kept digging, and one of them was Viktor Saryanidi. Thanks to the dedication and hard work of Victor and his team, the scientific community can no longer ignore Central Asia. This wasn't a wasteland like so many had believed. There are great ruins here from a civilization just as advanced as the others of the ancient world. The Oxus people appeared around 4,000 years ago. They grew crops in the countryside and had urban cities. They also established a prosperous trading network with other settlements. The descendants of Gonur, long after the Oxus culture vanished, likely built the city of Merv. Merv became one of the most important stops on the fabled Silk Road. Gonur, the vast and empty plain in Central Asia, is still ripe for discovery. Researchers don't know where the Oxus civilization came from or why they vanished. Nobody knows what their biggest city was or what kind of advancements they made. And it's definitely not clear what gods they worshipped. Number 2. Ithaca In Greek mythology, Ithaca was home to the legendary hero Odysseus. Odysseus, also called Ulysses, was the hero in Homer's epic poem The Odyssey. Historians can't agree whether Homer's Ithaca is the same place as the real Ithaca in Greece or somewhere non-existent. Historians can't even agree on if Odysseus was a real person or not. The same can be said for the legendary king Agamemnon, Prince Hector, and the warrior Achilles. Some think they were nothing but fictional characters, while others insist they must have been real people with whom Homer was familiar with. All the greatest legends take at least something from reality. Philosophers have been debating the true location of Homer's Ithaca since the 2nd century BC. That was over 2,000 years ago, and today experts still aren't any closer to figuring it out. What I can tell you is that the real island of Ithaca, the one maybe not born in legend, was occupied during the Neolithic period 5,000 years ago. Ancient tales say the island was named after Ithacus, son of Poseidon. The mighty Kefalonian state rose up on the island during the Mycenaean period. Much later, in the 12th century AD, the Normans took over the island. It was invaded by pirates in the Middle Ages and ruled by the French in the 18th century. Ithaca was even occupied by the Germans in World War II. Ithaca is not a very large island. It could have been the real birthplace of a hero named Odysseus. Odysseus may have also come from a smaller island named Paliki. Or he may not have existed at all. Do you think Odysseus was a real person? Let me know in the comments! Number 1. Lost Belize The country of Belize may have gained its independence 50 years ago in 1981, but its history stretches back 9,000 years. Belize was home to the Maya starting in 1500 BC. The Maya lived in the dense jungles here for over 1400 years. They built megalithic cities and developed their own system of writing. They practiced mathematics and looked to the stars for cosmic truths. But who lived in these remote jungles before the Maya civilization? Researchers call them the pre-Maya, a mysterious group of hunter-gatherers. 
The ancestors of these even older people arrived around 12,000 years ago in Mesoamerica. They hunted wild animals and munched on plants. The first true civilization arose in 2500 BC along the Gulf of Mexico. They were called the Olmec. They built massive stone sculptures that are still around today, like the monumental stone heads. The Olmec were skilled architects who developed an extensive trading market and the first large economy in the West. Before the Olmec came the hunter-gatherers. The first evidence of the ancient culture in Belize was found in the 1960s. After Hurricane Hattie, farmers discovered a pair of large bones from an extinct species of giant sloth. The sloth bones had markings made by a primitive knife. This was the first true proof that humans hunted in the jungles of Belize at the end of the Ice Age. A lot more proof of these people has been found since. A projectile point buried beneath a cornfield, the remains of an extinct horse, and a dead cave bear in a rock shelter in the Cayo district. All the evidence points to archaic humans living in the caves and secluded jungles of Belize. But did they have cities? Did they make homes inside the extensive cave systems that are currently hundreds of feet below water? Scientists don't have the answers. All they really know is that archaic people prospered in the jungle of Belize, and then they eventually evolved into the Maya civilization. Thanks for watching! If you could turn one mythical place into reality, which one would you choose? Let me know in the comments! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time! Bye!